You probably know General Electric for their manufacture and production of dishwashers, refrigerators, microphones, and household appliances. But I'm sure you didn't know that they dabbled in the manufacture and production of point-and-shoot digital still image cameras. I was very surprised to see them selling this camera. Uh, this was manufactured around 2011, could have been a year or two off. Uh, very unscientific research here, folks. But uh, I came across and happened across this General Electric still image camera. You can see it mentions here on the data plate on the rear, or rather the underside of the unit, General Image Incorporation Digital Camera X5. That is, in fact, the model number. This is the GEX5 series. I don't know that they made too many of these SLR styled point and shoot cameras. In fact, I think this might be the only one that they happen to produce. I do know for a fact, however, that they did make several other traditional point and shoot still image cameras. You have a threaded tripod mount here, but it is plastic, so if you're not careful, you'll end up stripping it. No locator pin, but that's customary for still image cameras. And you can see the major pitfall of a camera such as this, very cheap camera such as this. Double, it, it takes AA batteries. I don't believe that they ever made any sort of rechargeable battery for this camera. And the closest thing you could get is possibly getting and using rechargeable AA batteries or even lithium batteries. You do have an SD card slot here, which this did come with. An SD high capacity 4 gigabyte Transcend card. Nice to see it's not some no-name brand. And it does have some scratches and scuffing on it, but that shouldn't affect it at all. And the neat thing is that this does not have an automatic flash in an SLR, most any SLR for that matter, has an automatic flash mechanism. That is to say, when the camera detects that it needs some additional lighting by way of a flash, it will automatically trigger the mechanism. This switch doubles as the flash on and off button, so when this is locked in place, the flash is disabled, popping it up enables it. And you have a jog wheel here for manual, automatic, program, shutter, and aperture priority modes. 14.1 megapixels. I don't know if that's uh, interpolated. I'm going to say it probably is. I think this thing can probably muster up no better than maybe 7 or 8 megapixels when it's having a good day. And you have some sort of an image stabilization button to disable or enable it if you want to do so for whatever reason. An on and off switch, face detection, and your shutter button with integrated zoom control, which seems to work decently well. Front of the camera has this cheap lens cap that doesn't really want to stay in place. And probably the biggest feature that sets this camera apart from other SLR style point and shoot cameras is its extremely wide angle lens. This has, I actually don't know, let's see, it probably says it here. No, it just says wide. GE 15X Aspheric ED Lens 4.9 to 73.5 millimeter. That's impressive. And suffice it to say that you can pretty much this camera right now, if I were using this camera, you would see this entire area, those lights, this window, pretty much everything. It really does very well in regard to fitting everything in the frame without your needing to keep stepping back and back and back just to accommodate more things in the frame. And you could see that this was attempting to be a mock-up of an SLR. It has this grained plastic here, which I'm actually quite fond of. It doesn't attract fingerprints, smudges, and even scratches nearly as easy as the glossy plastic that's in use on the other parts of this camera. You have a speaker here, and this lens cap that keeps getting in the way. And here is the front, or rather the rear of the camera. Okay, I've got the four AA batteries inserted here. Probably won't get that much battery life, but enough for our tour. And now that we have batteries, should be able to turn on with no problem. And you can see the first notable feature about this camera, and probably the one that makes it stand out from the rest, and that is its wide-angle lens. Your electronic viewfinder and LCD button, which actually is pretty nice and something that I wasn't expecting in a camera such as this, or as cheap as this. You just press this button, and then it switches over to this internal color electronic viewfinder, which is pretty impressive. It also conserves battery power, because this thing does eat batteries up like they're going out of style. 
Coming over here, something I negated to mention earlier, we have access to the USB port if you don't happen to have or your computer is not equipped with an SD card slot. It uses some sort of a strange connector I've seen only with still cameras. It's not a micro USB, nor is it a mini USB connector. And go ahead and reset the camera settings. Somebody really was mess messing around in here and configured it. Okay, and we've got some indicators on screen now. So we have some controls here for the autofocus assist beam, which actually is emitted right from this LED up here behind that piece of plastic. Continuous shot mode, which just allows you to take a rapid fire sequence of photos. Continuous autofocus during photo mode, which is pointless because button push it down halfway, it focuses. So I'll just leave that disabled. Some date in. And a feature I wasn't expecting to see, especially on such a late model camera, this isn't all that old, the functionality to overlay a time and date stamp on the photo. I don't know what it is about modern cameras and why they dislike having this feature. I mean, sure, if you don't like a date and time on your photo, you can disable it. But no cameras these days seem to have this as a feature. I like having the ability to overlay in date and time, just like with the older film-style cameras. And it thinks, it thinks it's 2010, so I guess that will give us an accurate idea of when this camera was new. Somewhere around 2010, at least. PC mode, PC PTP printer. What I'll do is switch this over to the program mode as to allow me to forcibly enable the flash function and I'll show you its major problem. So I'll take a still image here. What is it doing? I didn't click the button. You can see another major problem with this camera is its inability to get the exposure and white balance settings correct when using its internal flash. I don't know what it is about this and this stupid thing is so... F I don't know why it just keeps switching between different settings when I'm not even touching it. But this was a problem that this... Again, it's doing it again. There must be something wrong with this jog wheel because I'm not touching it and it keeps changing. But you can see that its exposure and white balance settings are completely incorrect. They're overexposed. This camera actually, it just did it again. <laughs> Pressing the function OK button in the movie mode allows us to alternate between 640x480 and 320x240 resolutions, as well as 30 and 15 frames per second, which will no doubt increase your video recording time exponentially, but also probably viewer abandonment when they're watching your videos because they're just so pitifully low quality. Does this look familiar? It's yes, it's the iHome alarm clock. And yes, the stupid lens cap keeps getting in the way. I just have to hold it in my hand now. The ThinkPad makes yet another cameo appearance this time. It finally has been equipped with a battery, one that it's needed for a very long time. And of course, it's not going to cooperate enough to allow me to remove it now. There we go. And this is just some no-name brand model that's equipped and made for the T60. Okay, after switching it over to macro, you should be able to read this fairly clearly. Model T60, it's only 5200 milliamp hours, 56 watt hours, but I've gotten about two hours. The one gigabyte of RAM in this computer should have been more than enough for casual web browsing and document editing and all that sort of thing, but it actually wasn't, at least on, for on the internet. When I was just using this computer normally, it was pretty, pretty fast and snappy. Well, when I tried to ask it to go online or have more than just a few tabs open, especially those containing Adobe Flash plugins, it was just, it was too much. The computer would start locking up, or at least the web browser and the programs, and it was time for a RAM upgrade. So I actually happened across a 4 gigabyte RAM upgrade for this machine. It cost me a whopping $20. These are the original modules, which of course you're not going to be able to read but they're Samsung 512 megabyte PC2 5300 uh, DDR2 modules, two of them, which these are the old ones. The new ones are Hynix branded, 
and each is a gigabyte but unfortunately you can see that we're only able to access three gigabytes of the installed RAM and that's a limitation of the Intel 945 chipset that is present in this computer it can only access and use a total of three gigabytes of RAM hence why it's showing 2.99 gigabytes and so even if I even though there's four gigabytes in here I'm unable to take advantage of it okay now you probably just picked up on something if I try to get this to focus the camera is making attempts to focus but you can hear an obnoxious clicking sound and the focus mechanism on this camera is ridiculously loud so that's why I had it disabled but it does seem to work decently enough for video modes but you can see it keeps hunting it's it's not locking on I don't know why it does that the only good thing about having continuous autofocus enabled is for instances of zooming you can see it still is able to adjust itself 